Hi FM 95.9, good music, good friends. That is Lisa. Remember, she was in studio. The song is Safari. She was in studio. She's from Kenya. She brought us some um, some mooses and then she took them with her. Yeah, she's like, hey, have a bit of Kenya. And then she took the samosas with her. But hey, I'm with Paula Kahumbu, who is the con- conservation uh, conserva- conservationist from uh, Wildlife Direct. A wonderful, wonderful lady who's telling me about um, the awesome um, the awesome day she's going to have. She's starting off um, bird watching, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Because I was saying that, you know, we were laughing. I mean, I was laughing at, you know, this black woman busy telling me about um, bird watching. But we need to own our conservation. We need to own our country. We need to own our animals. We need to own our insects we need to know own everything absolutely um paula kahumbu tell me about kahumbu what is that what does that mean oh kahumbu it's a funny name it's my father's name okay it was a nickname his real name was wanjihia which is a kikuyu name from the people who live on mount kenya on the slopes of mount kenya uh-huh. uh he got the nickname kahumbu which means until until wow wow and there goes his daughter she's into every single animal and and insect on the planet we continue shining a spotlight on our kenyan people during our nairobi kaya visit kaya now we have paula who's going to tell us about conserving wildlife nature in kenya of course we told you about her dad who was con um saving the anthills <laughs> paula what is your role in the nairobi kenyan environment i love the bird watching what is your other role so i run a, a lovely organization with phenomenal brave young people who are out to achieve justice for mm-hmm. wildlife. Stunning. So, yeah, we, we do a number of things. Um, I mean, one is we try to bring bad people to jail, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. People who are trafficking in ivory or rhino horn or killing our wildlife. Yes. So a lot of our work is legal and most of my staff are lawyers. Yes. Uh, but then I have this other great team of young, wonderful scientists who come from the universities and even children from schools who join us to go into the national parks. We do things like citizen science. We Mm -hmm. take children out with cameras to take photographs of zebras. And we have computers that can read zebra stripes like a barcode. Wow. So we can count them. Wow, wow. We do this with giraffes and zebras. We also um, take young people into the parks to meet elephants. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know if you know that in southern Kenya, we have the world's longest studied elephant population in the world. Okay. And every single elephant is known by name. Wow, wow. So we take children to these parks Children have never seen an elephant in their life because mm-hmm. they've grown up in urban areas, yes. right? They've grown up in the city, many of them in the slums. And we take them out to the parks to meet scientists, Kenyans, who know every single elephant by face. Really? Oh, they know their wow. name, they know their age, Tell their birthday. Oh, so the funny thing in Amboseli is the elephant families are named by letters of the alphabet. Yes. So in the family, the ABs, the animals will all be named with an A, like Annabelle, oh. you know, Anari or whatever. So, so they're all named um, according to that letter of the alphabet. And children, what they, what they love is one, the children, these elephants have a name, but they also have a personality, Aww. right? Each elephant is a, it's a mother or it's an aunt and it's looking after somebody's baby and the baby also has a name and the baby's crying because it wants to have milk. Aww. And you know, and so when you get to hear how elephants communicate with each other, with their body language, with their voices, with their rumblings, uh, children are so moved. It is really quite, uh, it's, it's an amazing, amazing experience to take children out. And it also gives them more respect for the animals because they see how you respect them. So in turn, they will then respect them when they grow older. Well, I can say it's life changing. Mm. We've taken children out who are so chatty and laughing and naughty in the bus. The moment they discover something, you can see that everything changes. They go completely silent. And then they start asking questions mm. and you know that you've got them yes, and you've got yes, them for life yes and that's what we're trying to do wow 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 i asked you earlier um, why you burn your um your ivory your answer was incredible can you repeat it please man so on the 30th of may kenya burned 105 tons of ivory it's mm. the biggest burn that's ever been done anywhere in the world okay biggest ivory destruction okay so kenya um has been collecting ivory which has come from numerous sources, some of its natural death, but a lot of it has been seized because Kenya became the world's number one transit point Mm, mm, for ivory, mm. which means ivory coming from many other countries, including South Africa, Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Botswana, all these other countries is flowing through Kenya. Why? Because of corruption. Being stored in Kenyan vaults, and we know Kenya has a phenomenal problem of corruption as Mm. well, and we were afraid that this ivory could be uh, pilfered. Mm. And so the government of Kenya has always destroyed the ivory we never intend to put it into the markets we don't see it as valuable we see it as equivalent to any other contraband yes. cocaine or heroin which is always destroyed so it was destroyed and it was done in a very public way so that nobody would say you didn't really destroy yeah. it but also to send a message to buyers the buyers are primarily in asia china thailand mm. philippines mm. vietnam cambodia 
also in America. Mm. The second largest market is in America. Sure. So we invited people from all over the world to come and witness the burn, but also we invited the press so that it got huge international visibility. And anybody who owns ivory or wears ivory or sells ivory is about to buy ivory and give it to somebody. Shame on them. Yeah. Shame on them because Shame this ivory is, is killing these magnificent species elephants that are are so like human beings mm. it's like murdering another person of course thank you very much paula kahumbu this is the conservationist from wildlife direct you have been absolutely incredible now go and continue your bird walk <laughs> thank you hey have a great day everyone thank you man.